um, it's Saturday, April, I'm sorry, May 21st, 2022. I'm doing my morning thing. It's Saturday morning. I'm watching Sunday morning. I'm watching the local news program. I'm trying to figure out what human intelligence has discovered or thinks is newsworthy or whatever as I'm here trapped in this nothingness uh, in the fourth decade of being here trying to look for answers along the way in discovery or exploratory or whatever um and the lineup this morning jumps around a little bit but I'm going to start with Boeing Space Station. Things that are designed and planned. Um, and they're, it's big teams, so it's like big, big important people, like not like where I am. Um, and they apparently worked with Boeing and they tried twice and failed with the optical guidance system. It's unmanned. It's all remote, they said. But the third time, they got it. So now, I thought that was an interesting whatever. Um, then there's a piece on a man I'd never heard of. Not unusual. He's got a big following. He's in Boston. I, I, there's some underlying seething anger between Boston and Yankees. I really, I don't know why. Um, I don't suffer from that mental disease. Because I don't know why they hate each other. But whatever. Or, or if they've ever had a problem. Sounds like business, office, whatever. But like I got no history and I got no future. So I really got no problem in like, I don't, whatever grudge so or be grudge so um let's see so there's a guy there that sings in a band apparently he's from some place called dorchester um he looks irish like he looks irish um in america that Irish look, that Irish name, that Irish brand, our NIL is like so important in this gap between what the baby boomers signed into and how they lost Generation X completely in delivery and whatever. So that Irish anchor between New York and Boston's incredibly important, along with elsewhere, uh, considering there's some new neighbors that don't look Irish, whatever they call themselves. It's clear. I mean, you don't have to be Irish to look Irish, but whatever. So that's something the Americans agree agreed upon before I got here, was this look of the Irish. And then it goes into their clouder ring. Now, when I was taken to Ireland in the 80s, before the world went to shit, um, they there had these collector rings. So I went into some... It wasn't like Crown Jewel jewelry store, but it was some souvenir shop. And they had silver rings... Uh, I got one clouder ring with an onyx heart. And I believe I bought, I had enough money. Linda sent me with enough money, so I got a second one, which was just silver. Um, and they displayed what it looks like this morning, which brought back memories. Um, it was like the only time anybody ever... I mean, first of all, they speak very fast, and they speak... It's almost like listening to like Beethoven or Mozart in like their the way they they signature the air as they speak in in brogue. I know Kiwi has I found out has their own name for their brogue, but it's some kind of brogue and I call it an intonation. But like I I hear it 
and my third eye sees it as musical notes. So sometimes there's a delay between the sound frequency pitch they hit as they're speaking and their tempo. Because um, they're used to their version of English. I w was not as communicative. Uh, people don't speak to me as often, so it took me a bit to catch on to their their brogue and their tempo. I was very interested. I found them fascinating. But it really was like, I don't know, whatever. So um, then it goes from that to... There's some headlines this morning in a truncated format. And then it goes, President Biden's in Asia. And then it spans from that, some announcements he makes into something at home called Title 42, which has to do with disease control and migration, um, which for me ties into another story. I mean, you want to talk about epidemiological control? I had just recently, they infected one of their themselves, and then they stuck me in a prison cell with one of their infected where I couldn't get out. And the same thing that was infected was the same thing that was controlling the prison in New York State in the Queens County court system. I mean, it's, it's really disgusting, the area level management while I'm here. <sighs> Could be worse, but I don't want to ever see it get any worse than now. It would be nice if somebody could do cleanup. Um, then it goes into something with Biggie Smalls. They're celebrating his death. Somebody shot him years ago and like another Martin Luther King. But he stands in front of some paper that's got a Pepsi symbol looks like the symbol on the Korean flag. And then it has little Kim, who does not look North Korean. She looks very something else in the not us category. Um, and then it goes into... Um, there apparently at some point was a Japanese occupation of North Korea, uh, of Korea that they speak about, which is eerily similar to what the humans have done to me within my life frame in the New York area. So that's the whole context for what I'm putting up because some human somewhere thought to mention some of these facts. So I'm just putting them in the precise order. So it tells the pre precise story of where I actually am at the moment in New York and what led up to here because there's moving pieces. And this is one set sequenced of pieces. So on E21, which is CBS Saturday mornings at aerospace number 40.31 is when they start with the Boeing space station. Sunday morning. unmanned Starliner capsule gracefully docked at the International Space Station last night. Its high-tech robotic vision system is credited for that smooth glide. Astronauts are expected to open its hatch and begin unloading the 500 pounds of equipment and supplies it's carrying this morning. This is Boeing's third attempt to get to the space station and is seen as a test for possibly sending an astronaut crew aboard the Starliner by the end of the year. NASA has wanted to have competing companies flying to the space station. SpaceX was the first. I guess it's one thing hauling 500 pounds of stuff around the yard <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon no, when it's mean, hot out. It's another thing doing it in space. Are you hauling 500 pounds of stuff I around the yard? I wasn't okay, I just was checking. What kind of yard work are you doing? <laughs> I was planning on doing some pool work. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, it is an unlikely hit with audiences on three continents. I'm okay, at. Uh, Time, aerospace, dimensional time of one dot dot three zero dot 
0.38 comes on this image and then goes into this Irish rock, American rock band. CBS News, New York. That is, I'm shipping up to Boston, which can still bring a smile to anyone's face. Rocketed to fame by Martin Scorsese's film, The Departed, still played constantly at New England sporting events, the Dropkick Murphys' signature song turned a Boston band into a global brand. But today, Ken... Oh, the Murphys' law kiddos. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Ken Casey, leader of the Murphys for 26 years, has another hustle, as we found out in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Are there talents you acquired as a punk rock singer and band leader that translates to the restaurant business? Uh, <laughs> hmm, uh, give me a minute. I should mention he's wearing this shirt. The shoes he is wearing are Vans, V-A-N-S. Big in my day, in my heyday of nothingness. Doc Martens, Vans, and then I wore, of course, the ladies' version of Keds when that was appropriate. I wore Dutch clogs. Oh, I wore, wore a whole bunch of shoes. Give me a minute to make something <laughs> up on that one. Uh, Ken no. Casey's chain of taquerias is called the Yellow Door. This is one of my favorite things. I really don't care about food, so we're good on that. Now this... I'm unclear on, I mean, the people, I found white people in photos, I just, I'm looking, I, and the symbol looks familiar, from the time I spent in Ireland, but the, but the, but the symbols inside are, like, Latin has their thing, too, I mean, of like the Semper Fidelis and the whatever, but um... which raises money for those fighting alcohol and drug addiction. Casey's been sober for more than thirty years, but he's lost plenty of friends. I'm just curious at Hunger Games, weren't the Hunger Games profits supposed to benefit the downtrodden, like myself, like this Boston crew? Just curious, because I really don't see it benefiting either one of us. In fact, it looks like a depleting whatever effort and heritage. His 2017 album, 11 Short Story. And in a New York, I've been affected way worse. Because at least I see he's found concerts and stadiums full of ancestors. I don't have the same at the moment. Stories of pain and glory dealt entirely with the nation's opioid crisis. Jesse is the royal root is a rally cry. Jesse is the tune they always sing. In 2020, his band's live stream during the worst of the pandemic attracted more than 10 million views and raised $700,000 for local charities as they were joined by Bruce Springsteen. We need the this year, with the band able to once again tour on a regular schedule, Casey estimates they'll do 150 live shows, many in Europe. is these kids that used to come as teenagers 26 years later, they're bringing their own kids. You know, we have a lot of young kids at the shows, and to us, maybe that's the key to our future, is if it becomes generational. Whether he 
sharing music or Mexican food. The Queen of Suffolk County. That's so interesting. Local reference. I don't know. Could be Dublin somewhere else. I'm not quite sure. And this is where they mention the ring. Whether he's sharing music or Mexican food, Ken Casey's effort at Lord of the Ring type thing. Efforts are all meant to honor the three attributes of the Claude Ring. Friendship, love, and loyalty. I don't see nearly enough of those worn these days. I don't have one myself any longer. Just as with other things, things just get up and have legs of their own, apparently, throughout my life. Things just disappear. Things appear, and then things just disappear. My ring's one of them. Okay, here's the quick synopsis from the beginning, the aerospace dimension on this program, which is still the E21 CBS Saturday mornings. Um is 2.03, um, and then it spans a while. Today's eye-opener, your world in 90 seconds. <laughs> President Joe Biden is in South Korea on the first leg of a high-stakes trip to Asia. The alliance is a linchpin of peace, stability, and prosperity. The federal judge blocked ending a policy to expel migrants seeking asylum to prevent the spread of COVID. We've got to ensure that it is done in an orderly fashion, that it creates no more chaos. Russia claims that it has taken full control of the southern port city of Mariupol. Cases of COVID-19 are increasing once again across the U.S. Nearly one-third of Americans currently live in high-risk areas for infection. We need to get the word out to the public that we are still in a pandemic. The U.S. now has its first confirmed case of monkeypox, a second potential case also under investigation. Midwest, a deadly tornado left devastation behind, ripping homes apart and overturning cars. A nine-year-old boy is recovering after being rescued from a burning home in Florida. You all right, bud? The Dubs had Dallas right where they wanted them. And Golden State is heading to the Big D with a 2-0 series lead. And now this is interesting. They changed the weather girl, and she's wearing a very waspy-like outfit, which I rather enjoy, as opposed to what's been delivering the weather on this CBS mornings. and power lines and possibly cause some power outages. So I am happy to report, though, that we've got some much nicer weather on the way for a place like New York City. So after the hazy, hot, and humid conditions and the storms tomorrow, we are looking back at the 70s and 60s as we head toward the middle of the week. And Nancy, we'll be tracking that potentially record-breaking heat all morning and tomorrow on the Weather Channel Television Network. Quite the range there. All right, so now this part is the longer piece that then goes in a title 42 at 8.25. There, meteorologist Kelly Cass at the Weather Channel. Thank you. President Biden says the United States is planning to strengthen its partnership with South Korea. The president made the announcement as he wraps up his second day in the South Korean capital before leaving for Japan on the next leg of his five-day Asia visit. The president met with his South Korean counterpart this morning after laying a wreath at the Seoul National Cemetery, where he paid his respects to fallen service members. Mr. Biden said the U.S. and South Korea plan to work together on cybersecurity concerns and the growing threat of North Korea's nuclear arsenal, among other issues. The president said the U.S. has offered COVID vaccines to North Korea and China, but has not heard back. Both nations have high infection rates. Now, all of these people have been taken care of. They are fed, they're clothed, they look like they participate in some kind of commonwealth. I do not have this level of participation. For some reason, the U.S. blocked me out of entry to where I needed to be to find whatever higher level 
ancestors and then they mismanaged and misrouted me every step of the last four decades. Nancy Cordes is traveling with the president and is in, in Seoul this morning. Nancy, good morning to you. Good morning. President Biden and his South Korean counterpart just told reporters a short time ago that they are considering stepping up joint military exercises here as a means to better counter North Korea's nuclear threat. It comes after a barrage of missile tests from North Korea over the past few months. The president is in Asia to bolster U.S. alliances at an uncertain time. Things have changed. There is a, a, a sense among the democracies in the Pacific that there's a need to cooperate much more closely. President Biden, President Yoon. Here in Seoul, he visited a Samsung superconductor plant with South Korea's new president. He stressed the need to establish new supply chains that don't rely on competitors like Russia or China. A critical component of how we'll do that, in my view, is by working with close partners who do share our values, like the Republic of Korea. As he spoke, China was sending an unmistakable message of its own, flexing its muscle with new military exercises in the disputed South China Sea. The White House is also bracing for a possible North Korean missile launch or nuclear test. The centerpiece of the president's Asia trip comes on Monday when he unveils a new economic framework for the U.S. and Indo-Pacific allies. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, traveling with the president, says the partnership will enable participating nations to make joint investments in infrastructure and better share data about supply chains. We've been absent from that region for the past five years, and so this is America showing up again in the region and saying we want to work with you and in a way that benefits American and American business. Some U.S. allies like Japan had been hoping for a more traditional trade agreement that would include valuable tariff reductions, but it's gotten harder to convince Congress to go along with deals like that out of concerns that such agreements might not be great for all U.S. businesses and U.S. workers. Jeff? Nancy, thank you very much. A federal judge is preventing the Biden administration from rolling back Title 42. That is the emergency measure put into place by the Trump administration that allowed the U.S. government to deport migrants without allowing them to apply for asylum due to the risk they might spread COVID-19. Christina Ruffini is at the White House where the administration is planning to appeal the judge's ruling. Christina, good morning to you. Good morning, Jeff. This ruling was more of a technical one than based on the merits of the program. This federal judge, who's a Trump appointee, said the Biden administration couldn't end Title 42 without this mandatory public comment period, something that didn't happen. Now, the administration had hoped to stop this program on Monday. It's likely to last for a couple months at this point. And even though Democrats have been pressuring the Biden administration to end Title 42 and allow migrants to apply for asylum in accordance with international law, the Biden administration has actually used the program longer and to expel more individuals than the Trump administration, 1.4 million according to an analysis of CPB data. Now, some of our colleagues uh, interviewed the DHS secretary along the border this week, and he argues that the Title 42 program actually works against efforts to stop illegal immigration because there's no mechanism by which to prosecute repeat offenders, right? People just get expelled and then come right back over the border. Dana? All right, Christina, thank you. So if anyone thought that COVID was behind us the last few weeks and some new numbers tell a very different story. Now, um, CBS Saturday morning at, uh, oh no, hold on a second. It's CBS 2 News Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, 521 2022. Um, this is where they do this tribute to this Biggie Small and this Little Kim, and they use a Pepsi logo along with some other branding with a group that's been in New York. What's also, I find, very disturbing is they have some Empire Realty 
trust. I have no idea how they got their hands on that or how they formulated it that way inside of New York City. But it's really frightening. We're going to go inside to some AC, going to put away the big boy clubs and get some... Pop now, it's interesting because Cindy Shu says, and it's spelled H-S-U, by the way, she says, um, New York's homegrown entertainers. I'm like, it, I feel like saying if I had a microphone. Now, by homegrown entertainers, do you mean homegrown terrorists by an affiliate from outside the foreign and domestic policy Could, that's terrorizing the actual... Americans that were here before this whole nightmare started. Except I don't have that capability because she's stuck inside of a mirror program at teleportation, at television. So. Tonight, the Empire State Building will light up in honor of one of New York City's most legendary homegrown entertainers. The notorious B.I.G. would have turned 50 today, and some of the biggest names in hip-hop are paying tribute to him during a special ceremony on the East Side. City of Celia Perez has more on the celebration of the icon's life. Dozens of music... Now, it does say white. I don't know why, because they're not. So this gets confusing. Music industry heavy hitter stepped out. Now here we are. Here's the Korean symbol, but without the rectangle and a couple of letters put together at the gym equipment and the PSI, like pressures per square inch, that I'm having an atmosphere. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, they also use this symbol which is like a crushed L, like the arms coming down, like the roof is caving in. If that's a support structure, like a beam, like a metal beam, when metal beams start to crush underneath the PSI weight, like at a junkyard where they use compactors and impactors, that's what the Lexus symbol looks like. Out for Biggie Smalls, considered one of the most influential rappers of all time. Oh, it's everybody. So he is a big dog, like where have you been? But I want to see the whole world. I want to see so many positive things come out of this. Now, is this their next leg in They Have a Dream? And they don't really care about the children that were here before they got some foreign aid and started real big crime families and big crime troubles here. I'm just curious because they had a speech in front of the Lincoln Monument. Lincoln Monument is the savior of this, these lands and this territory, in front of the Capitol, in front of the Washington Monument, in front of historic, symbolic things. They had a symbolic gesture pronouncing and proclaiming some kind of war on whomever was here, even though it seemed really lighthearted and innocent. But it's turned out to be quite the opposite. I don't know if the sleepy nation's woken up to this fact, but, like, things don't even look slightly similar to where we were in the 80s. And I don't know whose design plan it is, but it, there's a whole lot of symbols and a whole lot of participants I can see on the TV. It's just great to be around and to be able to continuously celebrate him on his 50th birthday, uh, you know, and... It's, it's huge for the culture, for hip-hop, for, for our family. The late rapper's legacy was honored at the Empire State Building. Valetta Wallace, Biggie's mom, spoke at the special ceremony. He's not here. And I wished that he would see all of you. The iconic building will light up in his honor. Our world-famous Tyra Lights. Now, here's the scary part. 
Here he is. It says Property Manager Empire State Realty Trust. Which empire is he Realty Trust with? Since the kids and the lineage on the green linen have a very specific look, and I don't understand how any of them wake up in the morning and go to a job function while any of their relatives and ancestors are trapped away from the purpose for which they were built at like a UFO kind of a way. will shine in a dynamic red and white with a crown and the number 50 rotating on the mast. And on Thursday, Mayor Eric Adams. A crown, really? Well, now, doesn't that, since he's just a commoner and a second-class citizen, does that not put a real royal in a, some kind of jeopardy? Isn't that a threat amongst someone else's real crown that's not made of plastic? Just curious. Presented Biggie's son with a proclamation from the city, recognizing how his father changed music and the landscape of hip hop. He was able to turn pain into purpose. He used his music to define what was happening in everyday life. Big saved everybody life but his. Just to see that Empire State but the light up is gonna mean something real epic to me, to the family. I thank you, brother, for changing my life. Happy 50th. Even the MTA is marking... It even says hypnotize. If anybody needs to know what their operations are and what their cause is, great, it's illegal from the get-go. So why is it still in operation? There's him with a crown. Big's birthday. And I'm watch, a they're coming out on the C and the G line. Hello, Brady Bunch and Partridge family. Special Metro card featuring his portrait that will be released at select train stations in the late robber's home borough of Brooklyn. And if you're looking for one of those Metro cards, you better act fast. The MTA is only offering 50,000 of them. They're on sale now and can be found at the Lafayette Avenue C station, the Clinton Washington Avenue C and G stations, and the Atlantic Avenue Barclay Center station. Also happening today, the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music will host its free Open Stages Music Festival. So then, let's get the next time frame. Now, this goes from President Biden's meeting in South Korea today, um, and a mention into this movie that they're doing called Plachinko. Um which has a mention of how the Korean people felt or were being treated during a Japanese occupation of their area, suppose, allegedly. It's very reminiscent of what is going on in some alternate reality between their ties to some movement that's going on, but the visualization does not always reference straight back at Occam's Razor. This morning, President Biden continues his visit to South Korea, where he's met with the country's newly inaugurated president and has reaffirmed America's long-standing commitment to that nation's security. Back here at home, film and TV projects by or about South Koreans have suddenly been in the spotlight, including a powerful new series on Apple TV that's already been renewed for a second season. Pachinko is both an epic saga of Korean history and an intimate look at one family's experience through the generations. Michelle Miller has the story. Now for aerospace, I went back to E21 CBS Saturday mornings and it was at four five dot dot two two was the bit on President Biden, and then the mention of this Japanese occupation is at four six dot dot four three. One two three four. The lighthearted.
lighthearted mood of Kachenko's opening credits gives little away to the dark past of the series plotline. But it dares to hope. People are going to be really touched and it's going to move a lot of people's emotions. It did that for Minha Kim, the virtually unknown actor who won the lead role. You didn't have a lot of experience in the industry before getting this part. This is the most significant role that I had in my life. She plays Sunja, the matriarch of a poor Korean family. Her star turn in Apple TV's Pachinko is giving Americans a history lesson. A chance for a lot of people around the world to get to know the culture of Korea. They get to know our history. A history telling the story of Japanese occupation between 1910 and 1945. Um, whatever Polynesian or um, writing this is, it is... I've, it's not the modern version that they're using inside New York. Those glyphs are something, diff, some form of measurement that's totally different than what I'm seeing here. Koreans were denied their language, their culture. They were even forced to take on Japanese names. Many died in protest, and hundreds of thousands of others were shipped into hard labor or prostitution. Pachinko Sunja grows up during that colonial rule. In the middle of this, like, so much horrible things are happening around them, they were trying to um, keep the things stable with their love. I think that's the most powerful message that we have. While period dramas like Bridgerton have become big hits... I won't horrible. even watch Bridgerton. It makes me want to vomit. The whole even thought of it. So gross. Um, so that's what New York's landscape feels like. I mean, again, they had their little Kim representative in the high school holding me from entering any kind of White House level U.S. whatever. They withheld information from me, and then it was all, like, just a shuffle into just nothingness. And, like, every path I try to go down seems to be blocked somehow, including obtaining a college education, Several times I've tried to start back up to finish in a degree, and then there's some operative that they send into my path somehow, and then it gets shut down again. Francis Boyce would be the one of the last ones that they sent in as a roadblock or a tactical strip of some sort. It's a real problem. Star 1978, Star 8378, Nicole Caterizette's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.